one today Ashgash Area School District Board of Education meeting September 27th 2023 are we in compliance with open meeting laws yes we are marvelous may we have the roll call please Wyman here Carlin here DeWitt here Chris here Carnes. here Salaji here right here I'd like to invite up Gabby Healing and Mia Thomas to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very nicely done. These are two of our students from Oshkosh West, and we appreciate the time that you gave to be here this evening. Thank you, Thank you so much. Mia, can I shake your hand? Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. And Gabby. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to invite Louis Melcheski to the desk. He is our principal at Oshkosh West, and he'd like to share some of the highlights. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, board, and Dr. Davis for allowing me to come and speak this evening. I'm Louis Melcheski, and I'm the principal at Oshkosh West High School, and so I'm gonna share a little bit about what's been happening this first month of the school year. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we started our year off by making sure we go through all of our safety drills for our students and spending a lot of time on expectations and building that community within our building, uh, not just in the classroom for each individual class, but then also throughout the school. So we believe that it's important to have that relationships with all of our students. So we spend a lot of time those first few weeks kind of building that and getting to know students. Part of that is we send out a survey to students that kind of ask them some specific questions about themselves and then that gets distributed through all their teachers so they have a chance to get to know them a little bit more personally very quickly. Um, because it does take time to get to know students so we know that if we get some of that information from them up front we have a better chance of starting to build some of those relationships. And probably the most exciting thing is homecoming this week for Oshkosh West and uh, the ability to be able to play uh, a football game on our, our multi-purpose field at Oshkosh West. So thank you very much for allowing that project to go through. And, and it's very exciting to be able to have that game and be able to uh, dedicate the field that evening. So we're excited to have that. And um, our student body right now is obviously sharing all their pride and all of their um, excitement for homecoming right now uh, you can see it throughout our hallways and when you go into the gym during our w hour they're spending a lot of time in activities which have been very exciting and fun for for everybody that's participating so that's been really awesome to see that happening and i think probably the other thing that i'd like to share this evening is really just around the amount of welcoming that i've received from staff and parents and students um, when I go and talk to students in classrooms they are actually open to talking to me and, and so that's something that normally when they see the principal they don't always want to have that conversation but they've all been very genuine and and when I ask them specific questions about themselves they are open and and uh, that's really cool to have that that time to get to know them and so that's one of my my biggest goals this year is to start making sure I build those relationships with all the people in the building and also our students and and staff and obviously working with the families to make sure we have a successful school year that's great anybody yeah. yeah thank you thank you everybody thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. okay dr. Davis the land acknowledgement uh, yes, as we gather t here today, um, we would like to acknowledge that in Oshkosh, we are on the ancestral homelands of the Ho-Chunk Nation and Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin, who lived along the western shores of Lake Winnebago, Wisconsin's largest freshwater lake entirely within its borders. We acknowledge these indigenous sovereign communities who have stewarded this land throughout the generations and pay respect to their elders, past and present. We welcome the duty and opportunity to share stewardship of these lands. Thank you very much. Next up is the approval of the agenda. Is there anyone that would like to move any items on the agenda? Okay, 
Thank you. Then by affirmation, we will keep the agenda as presented. Board President Report. I have a short report about a meeting that I had this week uh, with Mi Yang, who is the president of the Hmong Cultural Center. She has a fascinating and inspirational story, and I'm so glad that I got to sit down and talk with her. She came here during the uh, Vietnam, Vietnam War uh, after being in a refugee camp. And from the refugee camp, she and her uh, 11, uh, 10 siblings and her family moved to California uh, where she met her husband, which was inspirational in itself. And uh, she, um, this all happened in 1983, and she married a gentleman named Lee Yang. And as husband and wife, they started the Hmong Center and Hmong facility in Oshkosh, and their, their initial purpose was to transition uh, Hmong refugees into our community. You may know it or not know it that Wisconsin and Minnesota were the largest Hmong areas uh, that, that they were transitioning into. And together they became a very successful couple. She worked at UWO and developed, uh, uh, she developed, worked for the state I believe, and he worked for Mutual of Omaha where he developed quite a large uh, business portfolio. They became parents and encouraged all of their members of their family to give back. And they certainly did that. At the height of their transitioning, they had 12 staff members, and this was in the 1990s. In the mid-2000s, they changed their um, status from helping not only Hmongs, but to helping the community. Uh, in 2014, the Hmong Culture Center was certified as a not-for-profit business. And the two main fundraisers they have every year are their Hmong festivals on Memorial Day and Labor Day held at County Park. When they opened their business in, uh, in 2019 on Main Street, they knew at that point that they would be able to help the community in so many ways. Yes, they stored all of their festival belongings there, but they also became a space that the community was able to use for so many different reasons. They receive no money from grants, they continue to fundraise, and the fundraisers today are <coughs> renowned, renowned in the Hmong communities and people travel from California to be able to be there. Dignitaries and state local governments come to the, to the festivals, and now the funds that are raised are raised for all of the youth in our community, not just the Hmong youth and they have a scholarship fund, and they also um, give back through several other programs. They just really want to make a difference. And I'm telling you this because they were given an opportunity uh, in Oshkosh, and it was really the education of them, uh, a higher education at UWO, and the education of their children, which made them so successful and put them in a position to give back to so many. And they really want to thank the United States government, which gave them an opportunity to be able to be more than a refugee. And their family, they want you to know that their family will continue to give back through the Hmong festivals. It was a, a very, very nice story, and I'm so glad that I got to meet her and understand more about her. Dr. Herzog has been a friend of hers for a long, long time and has attended many of the festivals and I hope to be able to be at the next one. So that's my president's report. Thank you very much. The festivals are remarkable and they're open to everyone. Um, the food is phenomenal and the activities that they have going on for <coughs> youth in particular is wonderful. Both me and her husband are graduates of one of our high schools, I don't remember which one right now. And. Um, their youngest child is still a student in the district, but all their other children have graduated from college mm -hmm. after graduating from our high schools. So, a great success story. Thank you. Superintendent's report. All right, so a lot of good news going on uh, across the district as we get uh, school kicked off uh, for uh, for this year and, and are almost, uh, almost a month in already. So, uh, starting with our adaptive uh, physical education students from Northwest and Project Life recently uh, came together for an exciting uh, 2023 homecoming kickball game. 
This annual event, hosted by our incredible teachers, uh, provides a great opportunity for students to get engaged in meaningful homecoming activities uh, where they are the stars. The students at North also came out on their lunch hour to check out the game and cheer on their classmates. After the game, students enjoyed a cookout together. So uh, it looks like it was a great time, and uh, thanks for everybody for their participation uh, in that activity. Uh, kindergartners at Carl Traeger Elementary are learning about feeling buddies and the tool, uh, a tool used within our conscious discipline self-regulation curriculum. Feeling buddies helps children uh, learn independent self-regulatory strategies and language that will become their inner speech for self-control, emotional well-being, empathy, and healing uh, for the rest of their lives and incorporates literacy, music, and movement. Um, so, uh, so thank you for digging in and, and being able to display some of these really important tools for our students' foundation. First graders at Franklin Elementary recently had an opportunity to read with partners um, as part of their daily reading time. It's always great to see our kids uh, engaged and excited about reading um, and being able to share stories with friends uh, is always a great time. So keep up the good work over there at Franklin. Also congratulations to the Oshkosh West Baseball Program for receiving the American Baseball Coaches Association All, Ameri All Academic Award uh, for the 22-23 uh, season. This is the seventh consecutive year that Coach Tony Gerhardt's and Wildcat Baseball has achieved this award. It's a testament to the team's commitment to excelling on the field and in the classroom. So congratulations to Coach Gerhardt's and, and the entire team for that work. Uh, recently, uh, Hoffmaster uh, donated $10,000 to our district's Education Foundation. Uh, the money will go to support educational field trips for our fourth graders in 10 of our elementary schools. Representatives uh, from Hoffmaster presented their generous donation uh, to a few of our fourth graders over at Emmeline Cook Elementary. We extend a heartfelt thanks to everyone who played a role um, in making this donation possible. Their dedication um, to our community's education is inspiring. Also want to give a shout out to uh, Teresa Duran, who was uh, pivotal from a district standpoint to help that coordination and make sure that uh, that meaningful gift will go to good use. So thank you to, uh, to Teresa for her hard work on that. Uh, geography students at Oshkosh North are learning a macro to micro approach to, the under to understanding the world. The students are designing a country that will be adding city centers and rural regions as they explore industrial needs and supporting their population, all while making connections to the model modern world. So always great to see this unique learning in action. Oh, to Lakeside Elementary uh, students uh, recently celebrated International Dot Day. If you didn't know that happened, so it, 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 it's a thing. Um, uh, classrooms read The Dot by Peter Ren uh, Reynolds, uh, appropriately enough, and were inspired by the persistent, uh, to be persistent, persistent and be creative. So uh, a great application of an international day um, to our literacy um, opportunities. Uh, our very own school board vice president, Dr. Barb Herzog, uh, was recently recognized with the, by the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation as the 2023 Partner in Philanthropy Award winner. Uh, Dr. Herzog is de a dedicated champion of public education and the well-being of our youth. She's also been a longtime supporter and donor for the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation and its Women's Fund. Uh, she has also played an integral role in the growth of the SOAR Fund. Uh, her commitment to education and serving others is an inspiration to many. So we want to congratulate Dr. Herzog on this honor and thank her for the incredible impact she continues to make um, in our community. Um, as a district, uh, it was also our honor to welcome the Community Foundation to our brand new Val Phillips Middle School uh, for their donor appreciation event. And we certainly extend our gratitude to all donors, partners, and community members who contributed to the betterment of Oshkosh and the Oshkosh area uh, public school district that night. So congratulations to Dr. Herzog on that. On that note, we also want to thank everyone who joined us for the public dedication of Vell Phillips Middle School. Uh, coming together um, with our community to celebrate our new space and our future was an absolute honor. Inspiring words by one of our eighth graders uh, and a powerful reflection from Michael Phillips, the son of the late Vell Phillips, captivated a packed atrium. The event was an incredible reminder of what we can achieve when we come together for a common purpose. 
And also, um, just from a community recognition um, standpoint, I want to say uh, uh, publicly to thank and recognize our school board members um, for their service. So next week, October 1st through 7th, is Wisconsin School Board Week. It's an annual celebration um, that serves as a time to build awareness and understanding of the vital function that elected boards of education plays in our communities. So be on behalf of the entire district, um, we are grateful for our board's hard work and leadership. Uh, our students benefit every day from the leadership and the vision um, of those around this table tonight. So again, thank you uh, for all that you do as board members, and we'd just like to give you a round of applause. So, thank you. And finally, um, uh, just a quick look at my calendar and uh, all of the places and opportunities I've been able to go and, and really connect um, at our school sites and in our community over the last month. So really uh, a strong start to the school year and excited to, uh, to keep things rolling um, into the fall. So that concludes the superintendent's good news report for tonight. Thank you very much. District Administrator Supplemental Reports, verbal report from September 13th, 2013 board listening session. Mrs. Conrad. So at the first board meeting of every month, we have a listening session right before um, the board meeting, and this is a great time for community members to interact with school district staff as well as board members. So on September 13th, two community members spoke at the listening session. One community member spoke on the sale of Washington School and what they would like the board to consider in their sale criteria. Feedback included the following, ensure any developer accounts for parking, if housing is developed on the site, consider affordability, a variety of styles, a match to the neighborhood, and housing for all age groups. One community member spoke on three different topics that included ideas on how to make community meeting meetings more interactive and engaging, including not using jargon. The second topic was a question. What should we expect to see in six months from all the professional development that teachers are going through, and what results should we see? The third topic addressed data and the need to address the equity with pants on fire was the quote from the community member. Board members and district staff dialogued with the community members. Any questions? Thank you. No. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Other committee reports, facilities and finance. Thank you, Mrs. Wyman. The Facilities and Finance Committee met uh, on Thursday, September 14th uh, at 7.30 in the morning. We discussed three main topic areas. The first was the district's dental plan. There will be no changes to the dental plan, uh, which is with Delta Dental this fiscal year. We also talked about insurance brokers. There will be a change from the current insurance broker from Brown & Brown to a Virgin, and there will be a written report provided to the board uh, either January or February, excuse me, December or January of uh, this coming school year. Uh, we also talked about communication of vouchers. There is an increase to the voucher reimbursement included in this year's state budget, which will have a, a direct impact on the mill rate in our district. It will uh, mean that 88 cents of the, um, the per thousand dollars will will be the result of these increases. So there is an impact on local taxes for every student who attends a private school on the voucher program. Um, there are current conversations to potentially change the funding for the vouchers from municipal funding, that is take it away from the uh, property tax owners and put it at the state level, but nothing more has, has come from that. Thank you very much. Legislative Committee. Um, Dr. Herzog. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wyman. Um, the, the committee met on August 29th at 9 in the morning. Uh, Dr. Davis provided with an update on the uh, Reading or Literacy Bill, Act 20, which he believes is a good move for the state of Wisconsin, with thanks to be given to the law lawmakers for making liter taking literacy seriously and providing a focus uh, for all. This legislation is already aligned with the movement that the district started a few years ago where we made big shifts moving in the right direction. Um, Dr. Brown told the committee that work is being done to support families and provide strategies to assist uh, parents at home with their children. The, there will be an updated website link sent to the board members and 
Anthony Miller, Jr., our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, will assist with the communication to families. We had an update on the state budget from Mr. Nihans. Again, we discussed how the biennium budget affects the Oshkosh Area School District. There's an estimated increase in revenue coming to the district from the state of $6.4 million. The $325 per pupil income, excuse me, increase for next year will not keep up with inflation. The district would like to see and advocate for uh, the index per pupil revenue increase to the CPI so we can at least increase to where we know the levels will be increasing. There's a significant increase in vouchers of 1.2 million. Uh, currently 78%, 70, I'm trying to read this too quickly, 78 cents per thousand of tax dollars is for the vouchers, which is close to $6 million. The high school voucher amount is more than what is received at the public school level for high schoolers. The district receives $11,000 per high school student, or for all students actually, whereas private schools receive $11,993, which is about a $3,000 increase over the last budget. Public schools also provide the busing for the voucher schools. We also talked about um, district policy 0155.7, which is the legislative committee. It was determined that the structure of the policy is sound. Uh, the only suggestion was to remove the reference to the National School Board Association uh, to expand the district's choices when making the decision to join a national organization. We also assigned committee members uh, to particular lawmakers and one hour meetings will be scheduled with the board member the legislator is assigned and Dr. Davis at locations to be determined. The committee confirmed that they liked the format of the talking points that Dr. Davis had provided to the board in the 22-23 school year and Dr. Davis informed the committee that he would work with Drew and Katie to create talking points in a similar format and have a draft ready for review at the September legislative committee meeting. The legislative committee meeting met yesterday and uh, we were joined by <coughs> Dr. Carl Lowenstein, a UWO professor who served on this board for three years. He uh, informed the committee that he now serves on the board of the Wisconsin Public Education Network, which is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization supporting public education across the state and encourages people to get out and vote. He spoke about the advantages to the district if they choose to join the OP WPEN which provide um, a network for connecting what is going on in Madison at the legislative level and the DPI level, providing great resources for referendum preparation as well as providing a broad network of resources across the state. The cost of the district to partner with this group is approximately $2,500 per year based on enrollment. And Dr. Davis noted that his past experience as a partner of WPEN had proved productive. Um, the DPI State Superintendent, Dr. Utterly, Underly, participates in the meetings and provides updates as well as responds to this organization. So it's a way of having a direct connection with our State Superintendent. The committee f uh, felt joining this group would be an advantage. Dr. Davis also provided us with a draft document of talking points containing uh, items that we should think about sharing with our lawmakers. Um, so that we're providing a consistent message. The document provides um, board members with the same information, the same message and facts to share with lawmakers whenever we encounter them. And it could be also used at the CESA 6 legislative breakfasts or as communication with the entire community. Uh, Dr. Davis stressed that the message to lawmakers this year should be one of gratitude. Highlights include thanking them for the investment that was made in this year's budget cycle, which will have an $8 million impact on our district. Special ed funding uh, will also increase in the district. And Dr. Davis noted that he had recently heard that there will be a focus up for funding in the future on mental health, mm -hmm. as well as early literacy. Um, and additional talking points will address career and technical education, as well as the school voucher impact. And finally, uh, there will be meetings scheduled with the three legislators um, whom we've been assigned to, probably to take place by November 23rd. 
uh, there were some Senate bills that were discussed. One of them would establish a requirement for students to pass a half credit worth of financial literacy in order to graduate. And another one <coughs> which um, raises penalties for failing to stop it for a school bus. The next meeting will take place on October 24th. Thank you very much. Thank Mrs. You. Carlin. Policy. Policy and governance met on Tuesday, August 29th at 7.30 in the morning. We met on this day to discuss policy 5410 on promotion placement and retention. The committee changes to this policy are included in your packet for approval at tonight's meeting. That was the only policy that we reviewed on that day. It was actually a seven minute meeting. And so now I'm going to summarize our most recent meeting, which was Tuesday, September 26th at 7.30 a.m. These policies will all be in our packet on October 11th for approval. We went through 16 policies and most of them had technical or clerical updates. So I'm not, I'm gonna save you all from going over every single one of these, but this information is available on our website if you would like to see what policies we discussed. There are 16 of them. Um, the, the one that I think is most important is we passed um, a policy related to flexibility in choosing a National School Board Association to follow um, for the Legislative Committee. Um, and we also uh, looked at the Special Observances Days. Um, Aside from that, they were just little t clerical and, and, and minor changes to a lot of the policies. Our future agenda includes looking at student accidents, wellness, and concussions. And it appears our next meeting will be October 24th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Herzog, updates from Wisconsin Association of School Boards. Thank you. Uh, we belong to Region 7 out of 15 regional designations across the state, and regional meetings are held in each of the 15 regions in October and September. Our regional meeting will be held on Thursday, October 26th at the Bridgewood Resort in Nina. Um, it's always a great time to network and learn from uh, school district members from other districts. There's a fall legislative conference which will be, will be held on Saturday, November 4th. That will be in Green Lake. Uh, it, it will get you out early in the afternoon, I think uh, by about 3 o'clock. But some great speakers. There will be speakers addressing declining enrollment and the demographics and pandemic impact on Wisconsin students. The Wisconsin New Reading Landscape um, will be presented by Laura Adams from the DPI. Public Opinion and Public Education will be presented by Charles Franklin from the Marquette Law School. Effective School Board Governance in an Area of Politization will be presented by Michael Ford of the UW Oshkosh uh, Business College, or college, I guess, and also a uh, member of our City Council. And finally, there will be a conversation with Assembly Education Chair Joel Kitchens, who's a former school board member in the Sturgeon Bay area. So. If um, your calendars permit on November 4th, I would encourage you to consider driving over to Green Lake. It's not a big, big drive. Maybe we could carpool as well. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Dr. Herzog, updates from CESA 6. This will be very <laughs> brief. Um, the CESA Board of Control meets the second Tuesday of the month, and we last met on September 12th. Our next meeting will be October 10th. And one of the highlights of these meetings is that, that there is always an update on the uh, strategic plan of the agency. There will be information presented on key performance indicators, the plan on the page, which summarize the entire strategic plan on one page. So if any of you are interested in attending as a guest, I would be happy to have you join me on October 10th at CESA 6. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving into non-agenda related public forum, we have one person signed up this evening. Mr. Hess, uh, clearly state your name and address and the topic you wish to address. And uh, clearly state and concisely the matters of concern. Limit your comments to three minutes. And remember that the use of specific names of district personnel may lead to legal liability. Tim Hess, 2645 Templeton Place. 
Last month marked the 20 year anniversary of returning home from my military deployment. Around this time, many of us reach out on social media to check in with those that we served. This year I received a message from a young man that just felt off. I invited him to talk and he told me about how the other week he and his family were sitting down for dinner and his five-year-old son asked, Daddy, why is it every night I get to eat all this food and you're eating those noodles in a bowl? This is the sacrifice that he's making. He wants his kids and his wife to eat well, but for himself, ramen noodles have become a staple. He's fearful of losing his house. He's cutting his pills in half to save money. As a commander, he looked to me as a mentor, and 20 years ago I told him, you just earned the GI Bill. Go get a post-secondary education, and he and his wife went and got associate's degrees. But all of us are feeling the impact of inflation. Utility rates are skyrocketing. Each week we go to the grocery store and either we come home with less food or less money. It's estimated that over 60% of households are living paycheck to paycheck. And the pain is real. And I get it's not the school system's problem to fix, but I would ask that at least you don't exacerbate it. Two weeks ago, you passed a budget calling for an 11% increase in local property taxes. Chris. In April, you asked the question, why are property taxes going up? And at the time, we heard, well, that's largely due to property valuation increases. But by and large, that statement is demonstrably false. And then two weeks ago, despite what Barb just reported, we heard the new rationale is because of the private school vouchers. But I've handed you something that I've taken from the DPI website that talks about that the vouchers are getting covered by state aid. And if true, then the voucher program has zero impact on the local mill rate. So what is causing the tax increase then? Well, it's simple. Please turn your, your handout over. You guys know, as part of the referendum, you've got a $65 million note and a $42 million, or $65 million bond and a $42 million note. And in 2022, you voted to pay off that note over five years. The annual payment to pay that note off over five years is 9.13 million in green. But the budget that you approved called for a $24 million pay down on that note. In effect, that is $14.9 million more than is needed to pay that note off over five years. Effectively, you're paying that note off over two years. And I ask why? Why isn't five years fast enough when we originally went to the community and said we we're going to pay this stuff over 20 years. That excess payment represents 90% of all the money that you're asking from local property taxpayers. And because of that excess payment, my colleague who has an $180,000 house who's eating ramen noodles and is cutting his pills in half, he's going to have to pay an additional $500 in property taxes next year. Please. Acknowledge the pain that the community is feeling right now because of inflation. I would ask before you pass the tax levy next month, reconsider some portions of that budget. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, consent to, uh, resolution agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And discussion. There's no discussion. It was Salaji and DeWitt. <coughs> Call the roll. Carlin. Aye. DeWitt. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Carnes. Aye. Salaji. Aye. Wright. Aye. 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 <coughs> Thank you. Any requests for future agenda items? You know I do. Go ahead. I always. in our lane because the board is responsible for policy policy and overseeing the superintendent is our main function so I came across a policy it's policy 6800 system of accounting and it says that the board has by resolution designated institutions to serve as depositories for all district funds and may by resolution designate additional or different institutions and the district's financial records show sources of revenue, amounts received, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. So I would like to ask for a report on the last time that we selected a bank to manage our $150 million in checks. And I would like to know if there is, a, what the RFP process was, and if there 
is a financial advantage or disadvantage to issuing a request to possibly switch banks? And it doesn't have to be a really long report. I really just want those three questions answered. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. The announcement that I have is recognition of school board week. And as Mrs. Carlin so eloquently said, our main goal is evaluating uh, the superintendent, uh, establishing goals for the superintendent, setting policy, and overseeing our asset and resources for the school district, certainly in a legal and ethical manner. I think I speak for the board when I say we do not take this responsibility lightly. We are responsible to the voters, to the students, and families of the district, and this job is not for the faint of heart, <laughs> especially because we put so much of our heart into it each and every day. I want to thank this group of board members for your continued support of the Oshkosh Area School District, for the countless meeting hours that are scheduled, for the countless amount of hours you put into this job outside of the meetings that are scheduled. There isn't a day that goes by that we can remove our school board hat and not think about our responsibilities here. And I want you to know how much I appreciate it as a board president. I also want to thank the community for all of their thoughts, their concerns, and their involvement in making our district better each and every day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other announcements? Perfect. Nope. I move to adjourn. Second. There's Ed Carnes. All right. DeWitt. Aye. Aye. Carnes. Aye. Salaji. Oh, right. Aye. Hi. Carlin. Aye. 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 Aye